Well, hey, good morning. My name is Joe, and I'm the worship pastor here at Santa Cruz Bible. Uh, and it's great to have you as we close out the 2023 year, but also uh, mark the beginning of 2024. Um, thank you so much. If this is your first time being here, we're so glad that you decided to join us here at Santa Cruz Bible, where really our desire is for you to come to a place to experience the hope that Jesus has that is available to everyone. Um, and we're going to sing together. We're going to open up God's word and even um, have some announcements at the end for you to connect uh, with the Santa Cruz community, uh, Santa Cruz Bible community as we move on into this 2024 year. So join us here uh, this morning. Come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet, for He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great thee. No hero of heaven, you've conquered the grave. You free and free captive, and you break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. You've been faithful through every storm. You'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, and I know you will do it again. Yeah. For your promise is yes and amen, and you will do great things. Oh, we know that God, you do great things. And oh, hero of heaven, you've conquered the grave. You free and free captive, and you break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awaken to life. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great things. And hallelujah, God. Above it all, hallelujah, God, you're unshakable, and hallelujah, you have done great things. Come on, we sing that again to him as we praise him this morning. The hallelujah, God, you're above it all, hallelujah, God, you're unshakable, hallelujah, you have done great things you've done great things no hero of heaven you've conquered the grave you free and free captive and you break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awaken to life Oh, Jesus, our Savior, your name lives it high. Oh, God, you have done great things. You have done great things. Oh, God, you do great things. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you had a great Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your family. You know, here we are at the cusp, or already, maybe depending on when you listen to this, uh, at the beginning of a brand new year, a fresh start, a new beginning. And with every new year, there are infinite possibilities. But every new year is not an infinite amount of time. And what I wanna do is I'd like for all of us to take advantage of this next year for our growth, not just our individual growth, but for us as a church, spiritually growing and just continually developing into who God wants us to be. You know, one of the verses I think about every new year is this one, Ephesians 5, 15. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you 
to do. I think that passage really describes what we all want. We really all want to live wisely. We want to make the most of every opportunity. We don't want to act thoughtlessly and foolishly as we live our lives. But to really do that well, to live wisely, to make the most of this new year, you have to know how much time you actually have to focus on what's most important. So let's talk about how much time we actually have in 2024. So I wrote all this down. I did a little little work for us, okay? So 2024 will have 8,760 hours in it. That sounds like a lot of time, right? Well, we sleep around eight hours a day. So that actually brings it down to 5,840 hours. And if you work, that's an average of about 45 hours a week. So then that takes it down to 3,500 hours. Still a lot of hours, right? We're good. But, but if you eat, which you do, like we do, that's about 406 hours a year that we eat. So that takes it down to 3,094 hours. And of course, you got to go to the bathroom. And we actually <laughs> spent 243 hours a year in the bathroom. So that is 2,851 hours, okay? So still pretty good. But you have to get ready to go places too, right? And that's about an hour a day. So that brings it down to about 2,486 hours. And you have to drive places. And we're in the car on average about 20 hours a week. So that takes it down to 1,446 hours. And we have cleaning and housework, things like that. That's about 73 hours a year that we do that. So that takes that down to 1,373 hours. Still plenty of time, right? But we also need downtime to relax, okay? So we spend about 2.5 hours on social media every day. So that brings it down to 461 hours. And we still, even in the digital age, we watch TV about four hours a day. So that actually brings us down to negative 999 hours. Now I'm gonna pause there because We haven't even covered important stuff like spending time with family, going to church, exercise. But if you add those things in, because you're probably going to do those, right? Let's say you go to church twice a month. That's on average, right? In the next year, that brings it to negative 1,023 hours. We spend time with family about six hours a week. So that raises it up to 1,335 hours. And finally, we exercise about 7.5 hours a week. I don't, probably you do, but, uh, and our grand total will be 1,725 hours. I'm sorry, negative 1,725 hours. So I have some good news for you. If you take that, we really just need that negative 1,725 hours to figure it out. So we just got to find an extra almost two and a half months this year to make it all work. Now, if you're stressed out right now, calm down, breathe, okay? <laughs> the only You're going to have a great year, I promise. But the only reason why I did this is to show us is that we don't have as much time as we think. So think about this. This year, you want to spend time with God, family, friends, your church, maybe coworkers. I mean, we still have our jobs. We have a to-do list that's a mile long. We need to get these things done. And then we also have to find time to relax and enjoy our hobbies. So how do we do all that? We're constantly dealing with the reality that the Steve Miller band told us about years ago when he said, time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. We wanna need to do all these things and all this stuff's in front of us, but then time kind of gets away from us. Have you ever noticed that the urgent sometimes in life can cause us to forget the important things in life? And what the Bible tells us is to make the most of our opportunity. That word opportunity is the Greek word kairos, which means limited amount of time. So the Bible is literally telling us, make the most of the limited amount of time that you have. But let me ask you a question. We wanna get things done. We wanna keep moving forward, but move forward into what? I mean, think about this. We think so much about what we're doing in life, but where are we going? What direction is the, are these things taking me? We can think so much about what's going on today that we don't think about the overall direction of where we're going in our lives right now. 
I mean, really, think about this. Am I doing the things that God wants me to do in my life, and am I going the direction he wants me to go? This is why the Apostle Paul reminded us in Ephesians 5, 17. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. And what is acting thoughtlessly? That is when we move from one thing to the next, right? Just kind of moving along like a pinball, just kind of bouncing off here and then kind of moving over there. We don't need to act thoughtlessly. We need to act intentionally. We want to move in the direction that God wants us to move and do what God wants us to do. But how do we know if our lives are moving in the direction he wants us to move in? How do we know if we're doing what he wants us to do? Well, I'll answer that question right after this. And old things have passed away. Your love has stayed the same. Your constant grace remains the cornerstone. And things that we thought were dead are breathing in life again you cast your sun to shine on darkest nights for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song that Jesus we love you Oh, how we love you, cause you are the one I, our hearts adore, the hopeless have found their hope, the orphans now have a home, and all that was lost found its place in you you lift our weary head you make us strong instead you took these rags and you made this beautiful for all that you've done we will pour out our love this will be our anthem song that Jesus we love you oh how we love you cause you are the one now our hearts adore How we love you, cause you are the one I, our hearts adore, and our affection, our devotion, it's poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection and our devotion is poured out on the feet of Jesus. We love you, yeah. Oh, how we love you. You are the one I, our hearts adore. How we love you, cause you are the one now, our hearts adore, our hearts adore, our hearts adore.
So we ask this question, how do I get direction from God? And how do I know if I'm in tune with the steps that he wants me to take in life? And let me share with you a principle from scripture that has really helped me. And it's really this, living on purpose. Okay, so I'm gonna pause there. What I mean is living intentionally, right? Like we talked about earlier, not thoughtlessly, but intentionally living out what I'm called to do, living out what's most important, okay? Living on purpose requires, there's two things that you gotta have if you're gonna live intentionally. And here's those two things, priorities and planning, okay? I'm gonna say that again. Living on purpose requires priorities and planning. Now, now some of you go, that doesn't sound spiritual at all, right? That sounds like the things you do when you're working on a big project or a big assignment. That just kind of makes sense. But let me just say this, your life is the biggest assignment that you'll ever have. And if you want to get direction from God and try to figure out how to pursue that direction and get your life in tune with the steps he wants you to take, if you want to live intentionally, it's going to require those two things, priorities and planning. So let's talk about them for a second. The first one is priorities. You already know what that means. Priorities are what's most important, okay? Jesus talked about our priorities, what's most important in our lives, when he said this in Matthew 6, 33. But more than anything else, put God's work first and do what he wants, and then the other things will be yours as well. So what does that mean? What it means is this, is if we want to understand what God wants us to do, then our relationship with him becomes very important, right? And it deserves an important place in our lives. It's just like your marriage, right? If you value your marriage and it's important to you, then time with your spouse is very important, right? You don't want to say, my marriage is really important. What's her name again? Like, you don't want to do that, right? Like, it's got to be important to you and it's got to be in an important place. Because I want you to think about this. Your relationship with God affects all other relationships and situations that you deal with every day. I mean, let's be honest for a second. When you feel connected with God, you tend to handle problems better and you make wiser decisions. When you don't feel as connected to God, we don't tend to handle problems as well and we don't make great decisions sometimes. And so when we see all that, we understand that this relationship that we have with God is so important because we need to understand what he wants us to do. It is the priority for us because it centers everything else. We have to decide on our priorities. Let me tell you something fun that I want you to try doing, okay? You can do this while you're traveling, seeing family this week, or you're at home, wherever. I want you to do this. Make two lists, okay? That doesn't sound very fun, but trust me, this is actually pretty fun. Take the first list, okay, and put down your priorities, okay? Uh, Like example, time with God or time with family or my job or homework or whatever that is, okay? Just list the things out are important to you and then rank them in the order of importance, basically what you believe they should be, okay? So just rank them up like this should be the most important, then this, then that, okay? The rank that you feel like everything should be in your life, okay? Then take that second list, take all the things you put in that first list, okay? And rank them as you're actually living them right now. Okay? Now be honest because you're the only one seeing this, okay? So actually put in the rankings of Well, actually, right now, this is most important. And actually, right now, this is most important. And then when you do that, and then look at the difference between the two lists. And here's here's what happens. It's very sobering when you do this, because I think in our minds, sometimes we think things are over here and over there. But when you see on paper what's really too high and how high it is and what's too low and how low it is, it's very sobering for us. And it does explain a little bit of the weird disconnection we feel sometimes spiritually. I used to do this with high school students when I did student ministry, and they would share their list. And when you had to actually read out loud, you know, girlfriends, sports, friends, school, and then God came in at like 10 or 11, well, no wonder you feel spiritually disconnected, right? It's not a priority. It's not even in your sphere of the things that you're doing every day. And it was a wake-up call for a lot of us. And I think it might be a wake-up call still today for us to look and say, here's what I believe and here's the things that are essential, but are those things actually showing up in my everyday life? 
Now, the other element we get into play, we've talked about our priorities, but just sitting and writing those down is not going to make a difference. You have to have planning, okay? And planning is when my time matches my priorities, okay? This is when we take something that we say should happen and we actually make it happen. Now, the Bible actually tells us in Proverbs 21.5, it says this, careful planning puts you ahead in the long run. Hurry and scurry put you further behind. We talked about earlier that we don't want to act thoughtlessly, right? Moving from one thing to the next, because here's the thing. Moving from one thing to the next is not necessarily moving forward. And if we're not careful, we know this. If our time is not planned according to our priorities, our time gets pushed around. And you know who that bully is? It's urgency. It's the things that pop up. It's this urgency comes in and shoves our time around. And those things are going to happen. But we have to have a plan for our priorities or they're never going to happen. We have to make our time match them. So here's how you do this. Take your priorities that you just did, okay? And then take your calendar because you're an adult and you have a calendar, okay? Whether it's physical or digital, you have a calendar, okay? And then here's what I want you to do, okay? Plug in, as you look ahead at your week, plug in your priorities by rank, okay? So for example, if time with God is your number one, which I highly recommend, by the way, if that's your number one, then that gets first dibs on the time that you have open during that week. So it gets first pick. And then if time with family is number two, then you put that in second. If you're a student and you have a lot of homework, then homework goes in third. So those are kind of things that you kind of plug those in as they go. And then you start to see that now your time is starting to get managed, not by the urgent, but by your priorities. So what does this do? Well, instead of procrastinating a priority, now I'm protecting it. Instead of putting it off and kicking the can every week, every month, I'll get that started, I'll start doing that. Well, now I'm proactively pursuing something that is important to me. And it's right there. I want you to think about this. Psalms 37, 23. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. So here's what happens when we live out our priorities, right? We're now getting direction from God in the details of our lives. Sometimes we think God's up there. He doesn't care about the details of our lives. He cares a ton about the details of our lives. He wants to guide our steps. So if we live on purpose, we're getting guidance from God and we're being able to live out those steps. But what does it mean to live on purpose? It requires thinking out, what are my priorities? Where is God speaking into that? And then looking at how you're planning your time and giving God the ability to speak into that too. Now, let me say this, okay? Because this, this is, I want to make sure I clarify something. When we talk about time with God and even talk about planning, these are big guilt traps for people. Just even talking about these topics make us feel like we're behind the ball. We feel guilty about what we're not doing and all that kind of stuff. And I want you to look me in the eyes right now, as hard as that may be to do, but just do it right now, okay? Please do not, feel guilty. Do not beat yourself up. God is not doing that. You don't need to do that either. If you mess up, just keep going. If you miss a whole time or miss a week or something happens, just keep going. If you try something and it doesn't work, try something else. Try something new. Listen to me. Don't give up. Okay? That's what's most important. It, it, sometimes it feels a little weird to start doing this and getting in the habit of it again, and we feel bad that we haven't been doing it. Don't feel bad. Do you know this? God loves you so much. He cares for you so much. Let his love guide this entire thing. This is not about checking a box. This is not about doing something to try to make God happy or try to get him to answer your prayers. No, this is about enjoying a relationship with God. So here it is. If you mess up, Laugh about it with God. Keep moving. If you try something and it works, enjoy it with God and enjoy your relationship with him. I want to remind you, God loves you so much and he cares about you so, so much. And let that love guide this entire process. And sometimes when we don't feel connected to God and we're not spending time with him, we forget how much he cares. We forget how much he loves us. And we forget that he delights 
in the details of our lives. So what are we saying? May this year be a year where you're not overwhelmed by trying to do it all. May this be a year where everything you do is saturated by the love of God, where you feel his guidance in your life, where you feel like you're walking in those steps. Like you've heard me say numerous times, I pray that this will be a year where every day you wake up right where God wants you to be, doing what he wants you to do. There's no better place, even when it's scary, even when it's uncertain. There's no better place than that for us. Because here's the truth. He delights in the details of our lives. And may we follow his guidance. Let me say a quick prayer for us. Father, we pray first of all that you be with all the people who are traveling this week and just protect them. God, thank you so much for our community of the people who are coming in every Sunday and the people who watch online every Sunday. We all connect in this space and we seek you together. We're not perfect people, we're broken, but we thank you for your love and your healing and your grace. And God, would you share that love and that healing and that grace with us as we take steps to live intentionally? For so many of us, we, we've kind of been adrift in our lives, kind of out there trying to figure things out. And we want to live on purpose and live intentionally, but we know that's going to require us reevaluating what's most important and to start putting those things into our actual schedules and lives. And God, we're not going to get it right, but we're going to get connected with you. In the times that we mess up, help us not to beat ourselves up, but just to keep moving forward and help us all. Let this just be an exercise that we all do to experience your love in a deeper way. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. And Father of kindness, you have poured out grace. You brought me out of darkness, you have filled me with peace. Give me mercy on my heart. Yes and amen. Oh, we know 
that all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Thanks so much, Joe. That was awesome. And thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, we're back in person January 7th, next Sunday. Do, don't forget that. Don't miss that. That's going to be a powerful Sunday. But I also want to announce something else that you want to know about. 2024 is also a year people are kind of dreading because of it's a you know it's an election year, right? And the last one was a little bit crazy. And we really want to our church has a lot of different political perspectives, red, blue, green, you name it. And I think it's good for us to come together and go back to what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to follow Jesus no matter what political views you've had? And so we're gonna do that January 14th in a new series called Engaging Politics Without Embarrassing Jesus. I know that title, yeah, it's a lot. You're not gonna wanna miss this. In fact, you wanna bring some people into this conversation. I think this is gonna be a very helpful conversation for us as we enter the new year. Speaking of, have a great new year. We'll see you Sunday.